Hi everyone and welcome to Pal the Tech. I am so happy to be back here in the studio. Today we are talking about the histogram. I love the histogram. It's my all time favorite photography tool. The histogram is one of those tools that once you wrap your mind around it, it's easy to understand and use. You just need to have one of those, oh, that's what it's about moments. Well, you've come to the right place. A histogram is the little display graph that appears either on your camera while you're taking or playing back a photo or it's available later on in post-production software such as Lightroom and Capture One. A histogram never tells you what's right or wrong with your photo. It's simply a tool. One of the many tools in your photography toolbox that's there to help you make the best exposure decision that you can based on what you want to achieve artistically. Now many photographers use the histogram because they have either one or both of the two big exposure fears. Fear number one is that they are afraid of overexposing areas in their scene with too much light. This is known as blowing the highlights. And this is a valid fear because once you blow your highlights, you end up with nothing but white in areas of your image. No sensor data, no image data, nothing. And you go straight to exposure jail. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. Fear number two is the fear of underexposing areas of your image so much you lose data. And this is otherwise known as crushing your blacks. And you also will get sent to underexposure jail. No $200 for you. There are basically three types of histograms and they all function in basically the same manner. The first is a standard luminosity histogram and it looks like this. So to enable the histogram, go into the settings of your camera located in the wrench area under screen setup and look for DISP custom setting and go ahead and tick the box that says histogram. Now you will see your histogram right here. You see that? And it changes depending upon your scene, okay? Live, look at that. This histogram has no color information displayed at all. It's just a grayscale reduction of the exposure range of your image. The second type is called your RGB histogram and it will show you four histograms at the same time. A regular histogram and a separate histogram for red, green, and blue color channels. Now, most Fujifilm cameras have this type of histogram that you can enable. Press and hold down the DISP back button. Once you get to this menu, simply assign a custom button or a swipe gesture to the histogram. In this case, I'm assigning it to the swipe up gesture, histogram. Now, when I swipe up, Boom, there's my RGB histogram. And the third type of histogram you may see is the combined histogram, where you see everything all at once in the same graph. The red, green, blue, and luminosity values are all represented together. Now, this type of histogram is used most often in a post-production workflow. As I mentioned, all of these histograms function in basically the same way. Looking at the histogram here, if you've never used one before, it often resembles a silhouette of a few mountains off in the distance. These areas and shapes on the histogram represent the number of pixels in a specific tone in your image. The higher up they go, the more pixels there are for that specific tone. But what tone or level of brightness exactly? Well, you generally need to read a histogram from the left to the right. It starts on the left with pure black or 0% brightness. As you move this way toward the right side, you will see the brighter tones in your image represented here on the graph. Now, when you finally get to the furthest right side, if you happen to see pixels there, this means that there are areas at 100% brightness somewhere in your image. It would be very helpful in understanding the histogram for you to group segments of the histogram together. So for example, starting with the left, this segment shows you if you have any black areas in your image. Then moving right, the next segment over, we have the shadows. Then we have the midtones and continuing right, we have the highlights. And finally, the whites. And if you're in Lightroom and you hover your mouse over the histogram, you can even see little hints as to what each section means. And since there is pixel information in the whites, that means there's an area in the shot that's pure white, no image data at all, just blown white, okay? This area right here, you see that? Look at that. And so the histogram records that little bit of the picture that's blinding white on the right side right here. 
but look at the histogram over here. There's some areas of pixels that are all the way over in the black area of the picture, right? And obviously that must be this area right here, perhaps, or look at this, have a look at this. You see that? And that area right here is represented on the histogram right here. And if you look at the midtones, you see how there's a whole bunch of pixels in the midtone areas. Well, obviously that would be the sky. You see that? A lot of that is right there. Perhaps some of the water here. Now, anytime you make adjustments to the image, the histogram is going to change. Look at how this histogram is changing as I'm bringing up the exposure and then bringing it back down. Hold on a second. Yeah, okay. Before we continue, I'd like to give a big thanks to today's video sponsor, Anchor. For those of you that follow the channel, you will know that Anchor is a regular supporter of Paladin Tech and makes awesome products. Let's see what they're cooking up today. This is the new Anchor Nano Pro. It's the latest 20 watt small charger designed for iPhone. It can charge the iPhone 13 series from 0% to 50% in about 26 minutes. That's up to three times faster than the original five watt charger that most people are used to. I am constantly needing to charge these phones when I'm out shooting 4K B-roll. The Anchor Nano Pro has also been upgraded with a temperature sensor and intelligent software that runs while charging so that it makes the overall charging process safer and faster. Now these chargers come in four different colors. I have black ice and glacier blue. I should have actually had Anchor send over all four of the colors to show you for this video. These things are so small and colorful. I was actually thinking, okay, I'll do a bit where I put like all four of them in a bowl of cereal pour milk over them, you know, and then eat them up like Fruit Loops. Anyway, I will have a link in the description below this video where you can check them out. Let's get back to the histogram. But where you absolutely need the histogram the most is at the time you're taking your photo in the first place. Now, while you're out shooting, you wanna make sure that you check your histogram as one of the last steps in the process after you've framed and composed and set up your shot, obviously. So let's say this is the scene I'm shooting right here. Look at my histogram. It's like all the way either side, right? That's because there's extremes in this photo. There's very dark areas and very light areas. And this is why the histogram is never meant to be used as something that tells you whether you're doing it either wrong or right, okay? Because in this example, I'm blowing my highlights and I'm crushing my blacks. However, my subject is the Monopoly board. And if I go ahead and adjust my exposure to fix the histogram, have a look at this. Okay, look at that. Bringing down the exposure there. I'm not clipping anything, but you can't see the Monopoly board, okay? Obviously, you need to make artistic decisions yourself. This just simply guides you in what you want to do, and it's basically saying, okay, photographer, just know that if you have your Monopoly board looking good, you're going to have areas of your image that's going to be completely blown out. Are you okay with that? That's all the histogram's doing, really. Now, something very important. Whenever you're looking at the live histogram on on your Fujifilm camera, you are actually seeing the representation of the JPEG of your image based on the film simulation and JPEG settings that you've dialed in. It does not directly reflect the raw file. And because of this, your histogram may be over-representing any clipping that may be going on. And this is more noticeable if you are using the RGB histogram for color channels. Let me show you what I mean. So for example, here the RGB histogram is telling me that my red channel is clipping. Do you see that? And that's because it's basing its readings off the settings I have in the camera, such as Velvia Vivid. That's the film simulation I'm using. But if I change it to say, I don't know, classic negative, now let's have a look. No more clipping because I changed the film sim. However, remember that if you're shooting raw, you have more latitude. Now a handy tip, if you wanna force the camera to render your histogram exactly as your sensor will see it, then simply turn on natural live view. Go into the menu, under screen setup, natural live view, turn it on. You could also assign a shortcut button to that. Now, what your histogram sees through the viewfinder is exactly what your camera sensor sees without the film simulation stepping in the way and changing it. So I'm in natural live view here, and if I go up to here, I'm definitely not clipping. Now, keep in mind that if you're 
you're shooting with natural live view on, right? And you're shooting JPEGs. If you're shooting that way, then yes, your JPEGs will still have the film simulation baked into them, even with natural live view turned on. It just changes what you see in the viewfinder and also, and more importantly, what the histogram sees. To learn more about how the histogram, particularly the RGB histogram, captures JPEG versus raw data, be sure to see my RGB histogram video. Let's discuss exposing to the right. Exposing to the right, for those of you that don't know what it is, is a common practice where you look at your histogram and then you make exposure adjustments to move that graph over as far to the right as you possibly can get without clipping. Or in other words, getting the pixel lines creeping up the right side like this in your shot. The idea behind this technique is that by exposing to the right, you are saturating your sensor with as much light and detail as possible from your scene. This has the benefit of giving you a wider dynamic range and helps to prevent more noise from appearing in the shadows when you try and recover them in post-production. This is because you generally will find more noise present in your shadows than in your highlights. So exposing to the right is usually the end goal being you want to later on raise your shadows in post-production with as little noise as possible. So you expose as much as possible, saturate that sensor with light without clipping. Let me show you an example. Okay, for this scene, have a look. According to my Fujifilm camera, this scene is perfectly exposed. The exposure meter right here, it's at zero. The histogram looks good. We don't have any blowing of highlights or clipping of shadows. It's perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and take the shot. Now I'm gonna try exposing to the right. So I'm gonna bring more light into the camera by reducing my shutter speed. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and drop my shutter speed and bring more light in. Look, moving the histogram over to the right. You see that? Just a little bit. I don't wanna go too much and start clipping. Just a little bit over as far as I can get to the right without the clipping and taking the shot. Okay, let's have a look and see what we got. Okay, the first shot I took is on the left right here and the second one on the right. Now for each of these, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my shadows as far as I can. I'm cranking the shadows all the way up and look at the difference. The shot on the left was done without exposing to the right. The shot on the right, I had exposed to the right by about two thirds of a stop. There's definitely less noise in the shadows in the image that I exposed to the right when I tried to bring back the shadows in Lightroom. You can see it here. Now this is a subtle difference and I'm at 400% and I have the shadow slider cranked all the way up as much as I can get. I'm just trying to make a point as to why people expose to the right and use the histogram to help them do that. The other thing to keep in mind if you're gonna to expose to the right is the subject itself. If you're shooting bright, saturated or contrasty colors such as flowers or you know a Rubik's cube, then you're gonna to wanna to use your RGB histogram to make sure that the individual color channel is not clipping. This scene looks fairly good. It's not clipping. However, watch what happens when I switch over to the RGB histogram. Look at that. We've got clipping in the red channel. You see that right there? So the RGB histogram can be a huge help for you if you're shooting in highly contrasty or perhaps a scene that has a majority of a single color and you wanna be sure that that color is not clipping. You can also use the histogram when you're playing back images on your camera camera just after you've shot them. Now when you do that, if you're shooting in RAW plus JPEG, then the histogram will read the full size JPEG that has been captured by the camera. Well thank you so much for watching and I hope you found the video helpful. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. Please share your histogram tips down below. I would love to know how you do it. In the meantime, I'll see you in another video again very soon. Take care.